Hello everyone, I'm Prince Paul Raj. I'm leading the Chief Data Office in at and here in Bangalore and Hyderabad. Um, you're all wondering, you know, at and you all know that it's a telecommunications company and it's operated in US. And, uh, you know, our bread and butter is um, enabling the 5G across the US, all the states, and then the broadband, right? So that's our bread and butter. But why am I here? And why I'm here talking about Gen AI. So of course, like any other big companies, we are stepping into India and we are building our India Development Center and in Bangalore, Hyderabad, and Chennai. So we are about 1,500 people right now, but we are growing really crazy. So right now, let's talk about the Gen AI, right? So in at and if you think about it, we are 145 years rich history we have, right? Right from the day one, when Graham Bill, you know, took the phone and say hi, hello, right? At the time, at the time itself, you know, at and is there in the place. And you also know that about at and um, you know, you think about Unix, C, uh, programming, R programming, all these things comes from our labs, right? So coding is our culture, research is our culture, data science is our culture. So right now, what we are trying to do in Gen AI, that's what, you know, I'm gonna talk about it. And then also, I'm gonna talk about it, some of the beautiful use cases. I have six demos for you guys. I hope you're all gonna enjoy all the six use cases. So it's not just talking about the Gen AI overall, but at the same time, let's talk about how we actually use it in our day-to-day -day life, especially within the at and That's the context is gonna be, so that I can talk about you know, how we are enhancing the efficiency and innovation throughout the at and So now, you all know that about the chat GPT, right? Um, so how many months it took to reach 100 million customers? You know Netflix? I think it took about 18 months. Chat GPT, any guess? Two months, right? So that's the speed, that's the disruption that what we had in the industry. So having said that, okay, now can we go and just use the chat GPT everywhere? Or can we just go and use you know, from Google, the bot, or you know, whoever brings any LLMs or GPTs into the play? The answer is no for at and Why? We really care about our customers. Okay? We build the responsible AI for the people, by the people. Right? At the same time, we also maintain the ethics, and it needs to be in a secure environment for us. So that's why at and is not just going and calling and just using it. Uh, we created a, a secure environment. Okay? In other words, like you can think of it like, okay, we, we, our partner is the Microsoft. With the Microsoft, we have an at and specific security tenant where we have GPT and uh, of course, you know, other all models in place. From there, actually, we build our platform in enterprise level so how we can engage all our employees. Right? We are talking about 150,000 employees and how we can improve the productivity. Just imagine 150,000 employees, we can able to improve the productivity 5%, 10%, that's a lot, right? So that's the way we are thinking about the Gen AI and how we want to actually implement it. So when I talk about the enterprise, there are multiple business units across the company, right? You have right from HR, finance, network, customer care, um, it goes on, right? Uh, even you have data science team, uh, we call it chief data office, and we are also part of the BU, one, of, one among the BU. So how actually this can really help everybody, right? You can look at this diagram in the middle at and team, but we are trying to answer our customers, our customers in the sense it's at and employees. So we are not a product company, we are not selling this product at all, right? I just want to be make sure you're all clear about that. So this is how we do it inside at and for our employees, across all the BUs. That's what this is all about, right? So you look at one use case, that is ask questions, which means that you know, we can ask any questions. I have a lot of documents, I can upload them, I can ask questions, right? Right from the supply chain contract point of view, right? There are so many contracts out there. There are so many tax documents out there. And we build a lot of a wire, you know, wireless cell towers, right? So we want to know, maybe we went and rented one cell tower and it's a mom and pop company, right? So we want to know that, who are all sitting on top of the cell tower, and things like that. So there are so many questions we can ask about. Employees, we ask so many questions, right? I mean, we want to know about our leave policies, right? And of course, our compensation. There are so many other factors there in day-to-day -day life, in, in across the company, we will ask thousands of questions. 
So I'm telling you this enter enterprise platform, we have thousands of employees sitting today and using each one of the hexagon symbols that we are talking about, right? Or summarize. You really want to you know, upload your meeting and you want to summarize it, right? And not only just summarization standpoint, you will see a cool demo about that. You also want to know what is an action items discussed in the meeting, right? And similar fashion, you want to know what are the obstacles and you know, what is the solutions talked about in the meeting. And you also want to know who's that talked about in the meeting. I mean, he's just a participant or really he is contributing something towards the solution in all those sort of things, right? Otherwise, manually you will be sitting and taking notes and send a minutes of meeting and et cetera. But here, the Ask Summarize, it's going to be a very powerful tool for us. I will give you a small demo about that too. Then, you know, Ask Classify. We classify things all along in our life, right? Right from a particular row in a data or an Excel sheet uh, to the, all the way in an AT&T standpoint, we take a transcripts, like the call transcripts and things like that, and we want to classify. We want to see, do we see any signal fraud in the, in the, in the transcript, right? Like that. To, for protecting our customer, that's very important, you know? So similarly, ask data. So data is there everywhere today, right? Um, it's in the form of a structured database, a relational database, or a NoSQL database, right? Or nowadays we are talking about vector DB, or even knowledge graph, right? So the data is there everywhere in different format, and how can we just asking a simple English? You can actually query the data, not only query the data, and also visually see them. Right? There is a, the visual speaks a lot, so we just want to also see them, you know, how we can use it. That's what Ask Data. And Ask Ops is like, you know, operation standpoints. So, you know, I'm sure you all somewhat uh, directly or indirectly, you know, engage with IT operations. Uh, if something goes down and there is an outbreak, um, you know, if it is a mission critical applications, uh, then we'll be talking about SLA, right? Then we'll talk about CVR at U1, 2, 3, and uh, how you are triaging it, how you are solving this problem. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, there must be a cost associated with it. So all those things is very important, but how we can bring the productivity there, right? So that's what the Ask Ops. And obviously Ask Translate is like, we do have you know, uh, Spanish customers and um, all the documents is written in English. Of course, we need to translate them so that we can just talk to their native language as well. So we use Ask Translate. And another good thing is Ask Code. Ask code is, you know, we are all programmers and data scientists, data engineers. Uh, when it comes to the programming, yeah, we have been using Google's Stacks Days and whatnot. But now, they're not only just searching for a small, you know, code snippet, but also we want to think about in the business standpoint, uh, we are all migrating our code, right? We are always going from one technology to another technology when things are evolving. Um, so, you know, right from you take mainframe, you want to have business logic there, you want to convert it into Java. Now you want to convert them into Python, right? Tomorrow, some other language. So there is always a migration happens. The migration happens in the form of a source code. The migration also happens in the form of a data, right? So you have written some SQL today and you are migrating or you're moving up to a data warehouse or a big data stack like, you know, Databricks or Snowflake, whatever. You need to also convert these queries. Not necessarily all the regular expression works in all the uh, you know, the tools and technologies we have. So the, it is important from the coding standpoint as well to have that sort of a productivity and also the efficiency. Then ask image, you know, there is a lot we can, you know, learn from the image. Like I said, you know, it speaks thousand words. So how actually we can use the image and also extract the data and put it in the process of a business flow so that you can take a right business, you know, decisions. So I think I covered everything and the last one is ask lineage, right? So the ask lineage is something especially in the data world, we want to know, um, you know, the data originally coming from a system, and then it's got transformed into multiple systems. And, but you always ask a question, if you are the receiving, receiving end, hey, what is the lineage about this data, right? In a similar fashion, if you look at the machine learning models, you would also ask, what is the lineage about this model? Okay, this particular feature that I'm using in my model, it's actually, you know, gives a strong predictability, okay, how did this variable has been derived? Oh, by the way, it's going all the way down, and there are three raw fields actually, you know, combined together, or we extracted a feature out of it which fed into the model. So we always ask the data lineage, but because we are using different technologies in the pipeline, if you think about it, uh, it's very difficult, you know, to maintain that metadata across all these 
um, you know, the stages and similarly, and, and also at the same time bring that lineage. So we are using, you know, um, Gen AI uh, from that perspective so that we know the lineage so we can troubleshoot much faster and also we can avoid a lot of duplication the way we keep the data and we bring the ownership to the data, right? Most of the times we all derive and it sits somewhere and we don't own the data, someone else owns the data, right? So it gives the ownership and accountability of the data that what you're deriving it and using it part of your business process. So with that, you know, I'm gonna step into six demos for you guys, right? Uh, how I'm doing? I'm going very fast? All good. Okay, I would say buckle your, <laughs> your fast in your buckles because there's gonna be six demos. It's all gonna be very small snippet and I want to explain to you guys a little bit about the demo. Okay, the first one, you can see this interface. Um, we call Ask at and uh, You can think of it's a chat GPT interface that what you face. You can think of like that, but this is an interface that what we use in at and Like they talk about the thousands of, um, you know, the employees, we all use this. Obviously, it's not outside. Uh, it's our proprietary, so I'm just showing you a couple of clips here, right? And you see that, I mean, using this Ask at and the first thing is ask questions, right? So there are three types of, uh, you know, the domain that we have. One is, of course, the public domain. And we enable the public domain inside at and but r remember what I said in the beginning, right? We need to enable it ethically, right? And in a secured manner. So we are not opening up all our employees to go and browse something in the internet, all right? So definitely we take care of that. So that's why even if it is a public knowledge, but it's hosted inside at and okay? The second thing to talk about is at and specific knowledge base, right? So like I talked about HR, finance, network, right? There are many BUs out there, very domain specific. So those domain specific things has been maintained with the role-based access. So, you know, it is really well maintained, okay? And proper authorization also in place, uh, controls in place, so that the person who is really deserved to see the data can only ask a question about it, right? So that is a at and knowledge standpoint. The third one is my files. It's almost like, you know, bring your own data. You can bring your data and you can upload it and you can also ask questions about it and find the reasoning for your questions and answers. So that's what it's all about. So let me play a small, quick uh, video clip. In today's showcase, the cutting edge innovation we are thrilled to share with you is none other than Ask at &T, our breakthrough in the field of artificial intelligence. Let's dive into one of its unique features, PyTox. This feature goes beyond the simple Q&A functionality. It allows you to ask specific questions from within a document you've uploaded. It doesn't just provide an answer, but it also cites the exact location of the document from where the information was extracted. This feature currently supports PDF, docx, and TXT files, making it versatile from a wide array of document formats. Continuing with the capabilities of the MyDocs feature, once you've uploaded your documents by doing SPI attestation, it becomes readily accessible in the My Documents context page. This page acts as a repository for all your uploaded documents, ensuring easy navigation and organization. By selecting the document and starting a chat, you'll arrive in a Q&A interface. By asking a question, give a detailed explanation on the revenue growth driven by a subscriber and ARPO gains. Ask at &T will scan the reported documents to find the most relevant information. It then presents the answer not only in a detailed and comprehensive manner, but also with precise citations from within your document. This not only bolsters the answer's credibility, but also allows you to understand the context better. To further enhance your user experience, we have provided view file in chat and view file in full screen options. This allows you to cross-check or revisit your document seamlessly, whether you are in the middle of a chat or wish to scrutinize a document in a full screen view. In conclusion, our KTNT's MyDocs feature amalgamates the power of AI with the convenience of tailored search, creating an enriching and an efficient knowledge-seeking journey. With Ask at &T, we are not just answering your questions, we are revolutionizing how you find your answers. Yeah, it's really very neat. Now, like I said, you know, thousands of thousands of employees in at and uses this Ask at &T. Uh, Like I mentioned, there are three different domain, okay? Either you talk about public knowledge or domain-specific knowledge within at and or, you know, as an employee, I can bring my own document and I can just upload it and ask questions. And the way we have implemented it, the, the, the role-based access in place, and it's very well secured. At the same time, it's trying to you know, help the employees 
so that's what the small you know video clip you saw that so now i'm moving on to the summarization side of it so this is a ask summarize right so if you think about here um, we want to really explore in-depth knowledge uh, and summaries right so i mean any if it is a meeting or documents anything doesn't really matter to us uh, but if you want to really you know apply the summarization across their meetings or our, our documents, you know, here is a small video clip for you guys, how we are doing it in at and Ask Summarize is a tool that generates summaries from meeting recordings and documents. It also provides several meeting insights and the ability to ask questions. Multiple file formats are supported. This video contains a special message from our VP. Let's watch a preview of the video. Hi everyone, this is Santosh Pijur and I'm coming to you from at and in India. For me, at and is like the birthplace of telecom. Uh, since the first time Alexander Graham Bell invented telephony and made the phone call about 145 years ago. The transcript and meeting summary has been generated. Here is the summary and this is the transcript. We can also obtain the prominent topics discussed as well as the number of times they were discussed in the meeting. We can see the names of people mentioned along with the context in which they were mentioned. Here when Santosh mentioned Alexander Graham Bell, we can see that in which context he was mentioned. The obstacles and solutions and action items discussed are also present here. Another extremely useful feature is asking questions on the meeting. Here the questions we have asked are, where is AT&T on the Fortune 500 list? The answer is AT&T is number 13 on the Fortune 500 list. How many wireless subscribers does AT&T have? AT&T has almost 112 million wireless subscribers. We can also edit the summary as a markdown and save the changes. And fur further, we can download all this information as a PDF. Right, it's very simple and sweet, uh, but let me tell you the number of times that's used by our employees inside our AT&T, man, uh, I can't share the number. You know, those many times it's been used because we see this, these are all the things that from the Gen AI standpoint, which can, can be inserted part of our day-to-day, -day, you know, life, especially in the, in a, in a work life, right? Um, so, you know, if I'm not able to attend the meeting, but I want to read someone else, you know, minutes of note. How many times actually, you know, meeting uh, notes has been shared uh, or very well shared uh, or timely shared? You know, there are always the questions it comes into play. But I'm not questioning about the project management here, but I'm saying that this can be a really handy tool. You know, you have it in your packet and you just double click and just upload it, the transcript, then immediately you got all the informations, right? And you ha get to know the action items, you know, I, I, I really love that uh, because I really know that what is my action items are and I can just work on it um, even though I just missed the meeting and things like that. Um, then the good thing is ask questions about it, right? So you have that meeting transcript which has got generated. And now I can just go there and ask any number of questions. And these questions also persisted and obviously, you know, the human feedback mechanism is always there in place. Uh, so the model is get trained, right? So like I said, I mean, we are not just using the chat GPT. Of course, we look at all the open source models as well and fine tune it according to the use cases and the need. Sometimes domain specific also will go about it. Uh, but end of the day, this is a kind of a platform, uh, w another tool that we have, uh, which is able to summarize anything that we give. And this examples, we just talked about the meeting, but at the same time, even you upload a document, right? And you can ask them to summarize it definitely it will be able to summarize it for you. Think about you have a big contract document where it has 100 pages of the document. You just upload it here. It summarizes, number one. And number two, you can also go and ask questions about particular segments based on the summary that what you're picking up. All those functionalities, you know, we developed it and enabled it in at and So now I'm moving on the third use case. It's going to be ask data, right? So, like I told you, the data sitting there from the Excel sheet, right, in relational databases, and then as non no SQL or or knowledge graph, or in in you know in those big data world, 
maybe in Databricks Delta Table um, or Snowflake or you just name anything, right? So um, any company, you know, we all use different technologies in different contexts, but uh, the data is there. So how do we actually query the data? Uh, but I'm not going to learn from the business user standpoint because we uh, really emphasize a lot uh, from our um, journey of AI in at and is how can I democratize AI, right? How can I bring the citizen data scientist, citizen developer into our platform? Why? We can insert the AI in their hands and they can able to use it part of their day-to-day -day operations, which means loss to us, right? So if I want to enable a, you know, a citizen data scientist, I can't expect him to know uh, you know, the query language, for example, right? I mean, if a data sitting in a knowledge graphs and you have a query which is really complicated, which is going to go across multiple hops, um, you know, you can't expect that guy is going to, you know, write that uh, query in an efficient manner. Uh, but at the same time, you know, one language is that he knows English, right? So he can ask very simple English, he can type it there, uh, but at the same time, the data can come, okay? So this is kind of, we are, you know, evolving this ask data, um, in, you know, like I said, I mean, there are a lot of technologies out there in at and um, You know, um, when you talk about 145 years uh, in a company, right? So we are enabling one by one technology so that people can, you know, ask data, right? So, so let's roll the video here. It's a very small one. Ask data. We can leverage the power of LLMs to enable people to ask data questions in plain language and instantly get a visual response. Let's upload a spreadsheet to the application and look at some plots which the LLM provides. Here is an Excel sheet which we would upload. This shows the financial results for at and for the last quarter. Once the file is uploaded, let's ask a question. Draw a bar plot to represent communications revenue. Here is the result. We see a bar chart which shows the data as requested. Similarly, we can upload a spreadsheet with multiple tabs with data. We can generate pivot tables, pie charts, bar charts, and all types of trends from the data we upload. All right, so yeah, it's a very small video clip, but I said data is the oil, data is the king. You know, people talk about data a lot. Um, so it is important functionality for our employees, especially when we talk about the citizen uh, you know, data scientists or data developers, how actually we can give the data in their hands. Uh, and the good thing about this, let's say that business user, and he has Excel sheet in his hand, he can also upload it simply and also generate some sort of a pivots, right? I mean, he also just use whatever the documents he has. Uh, that is also, you know, one of the functionality. That's why I just shown the simple one, uh, just an Excel sheet, upload it and see, you know, what's happening. But at the same time, you can ask any complex questions against the databases, uh, either it's a you know, SQL standard uh, databases or even talked about the graph databases. We should be able to pull the data and show it in a similar fashion uh, under nice visuals. So I think we are th three done. So the fourth one, okay, it's a ask image. So yeah, I mean, we all know that a picture is worth of 100 words, right? Uh, but in, in, in computer science, uh, it's only matters how much you actually can extract, <laughs> right? Uh, we have seen the generation of the OCR that what happened in industry. Um, it's evolving, evolving, and I think we are in a beautiful stage right now uh, with the Gen AI um, into play. So we are talking about, okay, let's take one small business case that we have. Uh, you know, I have to be very careful whatever the examples I bring here, definitely appropriate. Right? We, we respect our customers, we protect their data, so I'm trying to bring a very small example here to demonstrate all these use cases we have. So here you will see that a tech person, uh, tech persons, you know, basically we have a lot of fleets uh, in at and uh, You know, these fleets actually go, if there is a problem in a customer premises, uh, we roll the truck and the truck goes there with the instruments and the technicians out there and they go and fix the problem in customer's place or in some other place, you know, in a public place where you can go and fix it also. So what it really matters to us is a compliance standpoint. Um, manually, we have to go and uh, update what is, whatever the picture are wrapped uh, around that particular van or uh, the truck, right? So we want to take the picture and uh, see what is the wrap on it. Sometimes we go for like a fiber lifestyle, 
sometimes we go for 5G network and uh, it is important for us what truck is rolling uh, from the compliance standpoint. So we need to actually take that data and then update it in a database. Okay. So this is happening, it was happening manually because we think that, oh, it's not a big deal, right? How many trucks you have and how many times you change the apps and who are all the techs who is driving the truck. But uh, if you actually multiply all those things, it's a lot. <laughs> OK, so that's a small functionality, but how we are doing it in at and just I want to demonstrate. Ask image, powered by Ask at &T, which enables you to upload image files and ask questions or summarize text. Let us upload an image file and see how it responds. Once you browse the image file into the application, click Upload. Now the image is getting processed. Once it is complete, let us ask a question like, extract the text from the image and submit. Here is the result. Our app successfully extracted the text from the image. And it says at and Fiber, internet that upgrades everything. Cool, so you saw that here, right? So it's, it's just a picture like this, but it's able to extract that at and Fiber. And what goes there, the internet, you know, that upgrades everything. Obviously, that is our marketing. So it is very important, whatever the promotions we run, that particular time frame, uh, whatever we want to communi communicate to our customers. You can think of this as a moving a billboard, right? So the fleet, so we definitely make use of our fleets uh, when we have thousands thousands of fleets. So this is one small thing. Again, you see it's, a, it's not like, you know, we are doing a, some you know, big data science or a rocket science here where I did this, I tuned this, and I got this. Nope, it's very simple, sweet. Business is doing this today manually. Okay, we are inserting a simple way of, you know, Gen AI here. So now the way it operates, it's our technicians. They can take the phone, take a picture, send SMS. Boom! It's there in our database, right? So that's the kind of, uh, you know, the LLM workflow we have behind the scenes, and this image, you know, the text extraction or. Uh, even applying any you know, logic to it, it's all happening in the behind the scenes part of our automation. So now I'm going to move on to the fifth one. So this is going to be you know, Ask Ops. Right? So you all know that, uh, I, I think I, I mentioned in the beginning of this uh, you know, the talk, uh, when system goes down, uh, you know, everybody's going to ask you questions. Right? And the very first question they will ask, when can you bring it back? Okay, either you are rolling back or rolling forward, doesn't really matter at the point in time. But when can you bring the system back? And it is 100% functionally you know, working so that my business is not stopped. So at the point in time, you, know, you definitely need to find the needle in a haystack style, right? So if you think about one sales flow, uh, it's not like one system is making a sales for you, for you or for your customers. Uh, obviously there will be there more than you know, five systems involved, uh, you know, think of it in a simple, simple transactions. So, you know, you are running an e-commerce website. Somebody said log in there, and then they browse and they add stuff into the cart. They go for the payment, then they do the shipment. Right? It's a simple one. But do you think there is only one system is managing this? No. Nope. Minimum four or five payment system, shipment system, right? User profile account system. So definitely, it's not just one system. Uh, when you really talk about the big enterprises using uh, to complain a one sales transaction, there is a lot of systems, there is a lot of actors, there is a lot of data, there is a lot of moving things is going on, which means there is a lot of logs get generated, right? And nowadays we are sitting in an age where it's everything is distributed and everything is a scalable, auto scalable, right? So definitely there is a lot of logs get generated. At the same time, being an application owner you know your application very well, okay? And, and you will be writing a lot of documents about your applications. You have an architecture diagram, you know, you have a context diagram, you have high level uh, you know, data design, uh, this goes on. We, we are very innovative people, we come up with a lot of documentations, and those all documentations sit, sitting in the documentations, right? I mean, in somewhere like wiki pages or, or file share, whatever. Um, so the logs are different places, you are, your documents are different places. Then there is a ticketing system come into play. Obviously, you know, if there is a, some outbreak. There would be some ticketing system, Jira or, you know, whatnot, LeanKit. There would be multiple systems, you know, people use different contexts. Again, you have ticketing system in place. So 
when you have the data sitting in this sort of a mode uh, for all application in enterprises, um, you know, that's where the ops really struggles a lot. And when they have a severity one ticket, they all get into the war room and they try to fight among ourselves themselves. Hey, this is not my problem, I'm out. Okay, now it's your problem, you're out, you know. So like that. So, but how Gene really helps, that's what, you know, this video clip is gonna help you guys to understand it. Welcome to Ask Cox, your new AI-powered chat assistant platform for IT operations and support. It is an interactive and personalized user experience for all. It allows application clients, production support engineers, and system developers to gain insights on the performance of their application. Today, I will walk you through an example of a production support engineer trying to understand the ticket resolution strategies, tools, and tech stack in use pushing boundaries, troubleshooting issues, and driving innovation. As a production support engineer, I want to understand what is transaction lenient? Everything thinks and goes through its thought process. First, it thinks what it needs to do and then it accesses its tool with a custom tools designed for Alitar. Then GPT answers what transaction lineage is. Now, I want to know which tool is used to report error alert. Ask Ops comes with the final answer. The tool used to report error alerts is Watch Buddy. Ask Ops allows you to select various personas. As a fraud analyst, I want to understand what runbooks are. Overall, Ask Ops can be used to reduce mean time to identify and repair by connecting various data sources. By using power of large language models to perform root cause analysis whenever a system error occurs. So I think, you know, if I talk about this one, um, this is not like chat completions or this is not simple, you know, question answering. Uh, basically, there is an agent behind the scenes, right? Um, if you would have listened to this video, you know, she was talking about different data sources. And it means that, you know, you have tools set up for, you know, consuming that data or observing that data in a real-time fashion. Logs are really, you know, streaming. It's not static, right? Uh, we can talk about the documentation as a static, probably, uh, you know, daily once or whenever the user updates. But the logs are really streaming. Um, if you really need to know in a real-time fashion, so behind the scenes there is an agent into the play, and each and every tools specific to that, you know, the 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 systems or sources that we are talking about, and then the orchestration happens, and the thinking process gets into the agent, you know, the agent is going to think like a human, right? Um, so if I give you an example, let's say I'm just carrying a water bottle here, not a water bottle, maybe a coffee cup, right? I'm in a living room. And I'm going to, you know, with the coffee, I'm going to the bedroom, and I finish my coffee, and, you know, there is one small, uh, you know, ping pong, the ball is there, I'm putting it in my cup, and I'm not going to the backyard, right? Uh, while I'm going, actually, I saw the kitchen, you know, um, actually, I was flipping it, my cup, the ball fell down, okay? But I went to the, with my cup to the backyard. So if you ask now, from a chat completion standpoint or question answering standpoint, the intelligence that what the Gen AI nowadays has, different models of different intelligence, I'm not gonna be very specific to that. Uh, it might say that when I'm in a backyard, you know, uh, where is the ball? It might say that it's in the backyard. Because why? The cup is with me, right? But actually I dropped it where? In the kitchen. So there is a thought process always come to the play when the human is really thinking it in an intelligent manner, right? So there is a tree of thought and there is a chain of thoughts uh, when actually this agents, you know, intelligence, you know, and answers uh, particular questions. So that's that's what you know behind the scenes of this um, ask ops. Uh, so the agent intelligently thinks and really look at the logs and the sequence of the log events, and then also understands, you know, the documentation standpoint. What is an architecture? Where it is flowing? How it is flowing? And collecting all the metrics, performance metrics, SLA metrics, blah blah blah. So then correlating and think like a human being and actually a, a production support person 
is triaging that particular incident that happened. And sometimes even we have the root causes in existing tickets because it will happen in the past. And there is a lot of notes out there. You know, the engineer would have typed so many stuff. So it's all come into play as an individual tools. But when it comes to the agent, the agent can actually smart, intelligently think about it and correlate the things and able to give us the, you know, the pointers, right? Um, obviously, like I said, it's a proprietary stuff. I don't want to, I faked up all the application names here. But in our real scenario, really we're talking about, you know, the at and specific applications inside and we are able to troubleshoot. And the end result is what? I mean, how, how you can actually reduce the mean time to identify the problem. Right? Um, you know, we have a culture in at and Every 50 minutes, we treat everything as a, as a one if it is a mission critical application. So it is important for us to be with, within that, you know, the boundary and identify the problem very fast. Right? So that's where we're going to use this tool or this is what we are using the tool. At the same time, after the fact, you identify the problem, how actually you can produce the solution fast. That's also a matter. Right? So in all those instances, um, you know, we use Ask Ops. Uh, which gives us the quicker resolutions and really helping us to find the needle in the haystack. Okay, so now last one. I'm moving to ask lineage. So this is the sixth use case. Um, so if I need to talk about the lineage, um, you all heard about or maybe read about knowledge graph and LLM together. How powerful it is, right? Um, so also I I think I touched a little bit upon. Uh, in the beginning of the in the talk, uh, the data flow across multiple uh, places. Uh, the data actually gets a new shape every time, right? Uh, either it's a, your data pipeline or your ML pipeline uh, doesn't really matter. Um, the data comes from an originating system, and you are doing a lot of a cleaning activity. You are doing a lot of a wrangling activity, and then you are perform. You are generating some aggregations or you are finding uh, indirect you know, features or relative features, whatnot. So data is getting transformed um, in that pipeline in multiple places. You might even use multiple technologies for doing that. Right? We, we, it's very difficult to have you know, one pipeline if you are running it in, across an enterprise, uh, a one platform or a one technology, it's impossible. So the, it is a technology agnostic, right? I mean, you, you can't say that I just only using this technology. And sometimes what happens is, or most of the time what happens is, actually you are migrating yourself from one technology to another technology. So, okay, by doing that, at least you got two systems or two technology in place. Um, so, the ask lineage should be agnostic to those technologies. Okay? Uh, doesn't really matter. But so, it has to more look at it from the business metadata standpoint. It more into the technical metadata standpoint, right? Using those things, understanding the schema well, and and wherever it is, you know, in the pipeline, and uh, using a Gen AI, we really want to bring the lineage. So obviously, behind the scenes, we are using the knowledge graph and LLM and uh, collecting all those data across these all technologies. So let's watch a small video. Ask Lineage, powered by Ask at and provides us lineage details about the tables and jobs across multiple platforms using Knowledge Graph. Now let's question the Ask Lineage to provide us the most critical table in the data platform. It answered us customer order table is the critical table based on the lineage and reports generated from it. Now let's know the upstream and downstream of the same table. It shows the source and target tables and reports generated from this table along with the descriptions. Now let's see the end-to-end -end lineage diagram of the customer order table. This generates the visual representation of the lineage using the text. If you want to update the table but don't know who all will be impacted, Using this lineage, you can find the impacted systems and teams and notify the owners of the system about the update. Integrating Knowledge Graph and LLM, we were able to unleash so many possibilities and created the lineage about our data. Thank you. Right, so, so, so you saw the clip here, right? I mean, um, of course, it's all fake data. Um, but it's important that the various stages of your pipeline, right, either from the originating system or you are doing a data engineering or a feature engineering, you are building a machine learning model, 
or you are creating some sort of a data insights. And end of it, even you are going in an end-to-end -end standpoint, the BI layer, where you are visually putting into some tools like Power BI, MicroStrategy, Tableau, whatever, right? And you're representing it. But if you really think about the end-to-end -end standpoint, uh, it is important to know about the data lineage. Why? End of the day, a business user or an executive, they're going to look at the Power BI report or whatever the BI layer report, and they're going to ask you questions. How did you derive this number? Okay. So the lineage goes all the way to the, to the left. So it is not easy, actually, if you are trying to trace it, uh, a particular data, how you derived or how you arrived to a point that, and you are, you are actually taking additions you know, based on that data. So it is very important that you know, how you do it. So that's where the ask lineage is really helping us uh, to understand the lineage, especially when you have various technologies in place, and you know, it is really agnostic. So okay, with that, I want to uh, you know, talk about, you have seen the six use cases, right? I mean, trust me, um, when we got this Gen AI keep going the last year, and uh, we found ourselves, okay, hey, it's really helping us a lot, you know, from the developer standpoint, or a technician standpoint, or production support standpoint, it's really helping us a lot. And we see the productivity, you know, five to 10% is going high, right? I think people talk about Gen AI bad, Gen AI good, uh, but you know, always the good AI is fighting against the bad AI. Okay, so that's my philosophy. But um, we think this Gen AI can be productive and it can be used in a way that we can really bring the efficiency to our enterprise operations and all those sort of things. So let me summarize quickly. I think I talked a lot. Um, so let's summarize. So ask question standpoint, you know, uh, from the BU standpoint, it's really useful across all the BUs, right? I mean, in enterprise, think about it. Your customer care, HR, network, finance, supply chain, and list goes on, you know, uh, according to the enterprise, right? So the next one is, if you think about it, the coding standpoint, you know, from a developer or data scientist uh, standpoint, you can generate the code, you can migrate the code, Java to Python, Python to Java. You can use it for part of your refactoring the code. And also, somebody wrote a code, I don't know, hey, copy and paste here and explain me the logic. Okay, you can use it. And sometimes it also helps you to fix it. Okay, um, so it's all about how well you tuned your model and, uh, and use it uh, to the context or the situation, right? So uh, it's not like a one size fits all here. Okay, so then ask data standpoint, you know, you can ask a lot of questions about all the data sets you have it in your enterprise and actually you can visualize them and you can understand the data. So we have, we have talked about that. And then there's a bunch of use cases, right? Maybe I didn't talk about it, right? So you can even create a content for your branding standpoint, marketing standpoint, or even training your employee standpoint, right? And then you can classify the data, right? Or classify the tickets. When the ticket comes, immediately you're trying to understand, you're trying to predict what is the root cause for a particular ticket, and then probably will be move on after that, right? And then summarize the extension standpoint, like a, like, a, like a demonstrator there, you know, you can summarize the documents, you can summarize the meeting notes, and et cetera. And with saying all these things, right, one thing I really also want to emphasize, these things is very important. Uh, we are not doing this Gen AI just for the sake of doing a Gen AI. And when we submitted this sort of use cases, or shown this example to the, the BUs, the business users, um, you don't even believe me, it, it, we got more than you know, thousands of use cases came in, okay? Because they go through their business process in a day-to-day -day life, they think that this can actually help them. They think that it can actually give them a productivity, okay? So it's not about removing the job, it's more like how I can get the productivity, right? How can I be more efficient in my day-to-day, -day, you know, work? You know, that's what it's all about. But doing all these things, very important is doing it ethically, right? I mean, you don't want to go on you know, put one public model or open source model uh, to an enterprise and expose everything. And we have to protect our proprietary uh, data. And we have to protect our customer's data. We have to protect our employee's data. So you have to have really a secure environment where you house all these things nicely. You have role-based access in place, proper authentication authorization in place. Then you do it. You know,